Hello and welcome back to Rev Real Estate School. I'm your host, Michael Montgomery. And today what we're talking about are price reductions and how we can have this conversation with a seller. Now, this is a tricky conversation. This is a tricky conversation for real estate agents, but it's also a tricky conversation for sellers. And so the first thing we have to bear in mind when we go into the conversation about price reductions is we have to have a high degree of empathy. And the reason for that is for us, we're going in there and we're just like, hey, we're gonna position this home to sell it faster and likely for more money because we're not accumulating days on market. From their perspective though, it's money leaving their pocket. They're thinking I was gonna get 500,000 and now my expectations are more like 450. So that's a pretty big blow for them. So that's why when we're going into this conversation, it's all about empathy. And we need to be positioning ourselves on the same team as them. This is also very, very key. Instead of us thinking about this as confrontational and I'm going to convince them, we do not wanna convince them. Really what we want them to do is make the decision on their own. We just wanna provide the data and point them in a direction. We want them to be the ones that make the decision. And if they choose not to reduce the price, that's perfectly acceptable. It is their asset. And I always say that going into this conversation with them too. Okay, so now that we've positioned ourselves to go into this conversation with empathy, and we're gonna position ourselves as the person that's on the exact same team as them, which we are, we're now going to go into this discussion. So the first concept that we have to wrap our minds around is when do we actually think through the price reduction? Now. Generally, there's a few different ways that we can think about this, but a very good rule of thumb is if you are at the average days on market for that given property type and you have not received an offer, there's a good chance that you're overpriced. And I say that given property type because you can't just look at all the properties in your city. Like if you have a $500,000 home and let's say the average price for a home in your city is around 500,000 and you're also including properties that are up to 3 million and you're including the $200,000 condos, those are completely different buyer pools and completely different product types. So we want to ensure that when we're looking at that average, we are looking at the average for that specific property type. Now, once we've hit that point, we've hit that average of days on market, we now have had enough time for the market to see the property and to not actually act on it. So here is another very important point. After you've understood that, also understand that when you're communicating this to the seller, we have to let them know that when we are pricing a home off the very start, we are missing the most important piece of data. And what is the most important piece of data that we can possibly have when a home is on the market? It's time on market. You can look at comparables all day long. You can look at appreciation graphs. You can look at where you think the market's going, but none of that matters as much as time on market. That is the most important piece of data. And you're going to want to communicate that to a seller as you're having this discussion. So when you're going into it, you're simply saying that we've been on, mar on market for the average number of days that it typically takes for a home to transact. And the most important piece of data we can always have when we're listing a home is time on market. That's truly going to tell us how the market is responding to the listing. Now, another strategy that you can use is if you're showing volume for this particular property is extremely low compared to other properties. Now, we don't always have that data. That's not easy to find. That mostly comes by way of experience. So if you don't have that data, of course, you can talk to somebody at your office, but alternatively, you can always look at that average days to sell. That's a really good indication of if your property is overpriced at this point in time. Okay, so now that we've handled that, we're going to get into positioning. And now when we're positioning this, this is also going to lead in with, again, a lot of empathy. And the way that we can do that is we can say, when we're approaching price reductions, oftentimes it feels like money leaving your pocket. When in fact, what we're doing is we're positioning your home to sell for a higher price and in less time. Now, the reason for that is as days on market goes up, perceived value goes down. And we know this in real estate, that as that days on market continues to tick upwards, and if we go and show that home to a buyer, the buyer's gonna say, why has this one been on the market for so long? We've all heard that in real estate, but a seller hasn't heard that, right? So we need to help them understand that as those days on market creeps up, the perceived value comes down in the eyes of the buyer. And so by reducing the price, we're not actually making the home worth less, we're positioning it to sell actually for more and faster. And this is the key line right here. The key line is to help them understand this, that a list price is not indicative of the value of the home. A list price is truly a number that a listing agent and a seller have came up with in order to market the home. The list price is what then? 
the list price is a marketing lever and your most important marketing lever that you are going to have. So with that in mind, we need them to understand that the list price and the value of the home are independent factors. They're completely independent factors. The list price is a marketing technique. The list price is not the value of the home. Which then leads us into this conversation, which is a lot of times an agent's worst nightmare when the seller then turns around and says to them, well, can't we just be marketing more? Are we not doing enough when it comes to marketing? Can we market this thing to sell for more? Well, if we actually take a step back and look at this, first off, when we're getting into this conversation, we want to really nip that in the bud and just simply say that the biggest marketing lever that we have is the asking price. And the asking price can be below the value and it will transact over that. The asking price can be way above the value and it's gonna transact for way less than that. But the asking price is truly the best marketing lever that we have that we can use at our disposal. Next, we're then gonna go into marketing and we're going to indicate what we've done for marketing and say that we've been doing this for X number of years. This is the marketing strategy that always works. This works and this is why it works. We're going to go into detail about that. Next, we're going to say, is there any marketing that you've seen that we haven't done that you'd like to see? So now we're starting to turn this into a two-way conversation. We're on the same team. Is there any marketing that you've seen that you would like to see on your home? Now, generally, they're going to say to this, you're the agent. And we're going to come back to the point that the biggest marketing lever we have is price. And with this, we're also letting them know that the market is speaking to us. The market is speaking to us. All we're trying to do is we're trying to listen to a lot of these signals that the market is sending us and the market is speaking to us. And that is why we're bringing this proposal to them. We're also letting them know that in no way, shape or form do they have to do this. Again, it is their property. It's just our job to have these conversations with them whether we like them or not, to have these conversations and advise them. But ultimately, it's their decision. Next, we start to move into pros and cons. So every decision in real estate, buyers, sellers, anything, all comes down to a game of pros and cons. And it's just like when you put a property on the market and you get an offer on day one, and the seller says, eh, it's only been one day, let's wait. Well, there's a pro to waiting, maybe you get more, and there's a con to waiting, maybe you don't. And so a lot of this just comes down to a level of risk tolerance. And so when we're getting into pros and cons, what's the pro of reducing the price? Well, the pro is that it is going to be surfaced to everybody again. We're gonna open ourselves up likely to a new buyer pool and that buyer pool is going to be excited about this new fresh price reduction. The con to it is, well, maybe if we stayed at this price, we would have eventually gotten this price. But we don't know that. It's the same thing with taking the offer on day one. Maybe we get a higher number, maybe we don't, but we have to be comfortable with that risk. So if we're going to stay at this price and we're going to continue to accumulate days on market, we have to be comfortable with the risk that days on market could continue to climb and then our perceived value could continue to come down. We have to be comfortable with that level of risk. There really is no way around that. However, if we're a little bit more risk averse with this, it might make more sense for us to come down to a range since we've already accumulated that average days on market in order to see if the market's willing to pounce on it at this new given price. So we've now framed this in terms of pros and cons with through the lens of risk tolerance because everything is truly going to be a level of risk tolerance. If you have a super risky seller, and risky in the sense can mean like, I'll just keep my price where it is, or risky can mean I don't need to sell this home. I have no actual requirement to sell this home. I want to, but I don't have a need to sell this home. So because I don't have a need, my risk can be higher. Now we should know that going into the listing initially, but generally speaking, if they're gonna go through the process of preparing and getting their home on the market, they do want to sell the home. And so phrasing this in terms of pros and cons through the lens of risk tolerance is a very effective strategy to help them make this decision. Because again, it's their decision, it's not our decision. Next, when we're going into this, we're also going to be saying this to them. We're going to be saying to them that we want them to have all of the information. We know that sometimes the information isn't great. Sometimes the information's fantastically exciting. However, we just want to make sure they have all of the information to make the best decision for them. And that's truly our job. So we want to communicate to them that 
We don't want you to come back to us and be really upset in six months time when this hasn't sold. And you can outwardly say that to a seller. They appreciate that. You can say, I don't want you to come back six months down the road and just say, I'm really upset. My home hasn't sold. I don't want you to feel that way. And so I just want to make sure that you have all of the information so you can make the best decision for yourself. That's really all it comes down to. And when we have that conversation, when we frame it like that, it is so much easier to have this conversation with a seller. Because we, again, we're not trying to convince them. We just want to warn them of potential risks of longer days on market, well beyond the average, and then accumulating days on market without showings. And then finally, we just want to highlight to them that when we are listing a home, we want to ensure that they have an understanding that we want to picture this like we're a buyer. We don't want to picture this like we're a seller. Because as soon as we start to put our positioning that we're a seller, it's very hard to read a label from the inside of a bottle. So we want to take a step outside and look at this home, this property, like a buyer. Because when we're looking at the rest of the market and we're comparing to other properties, this is what other buyers are doing. They're comparing us to them and them to us. So we need to actually try and take a step back, be as objective as possible, which is very hard to do, and we have to be empathetic to that, but we wanna be as objective as possible so that we can look at this through the eyes of a buyer. Now, how do I actually say this? I say this in the way that if I list my own home, which I have done and which I've sold my own properties before, I get another agent to price them and I get another agent to advise me. And I let sellers know this, that I let other agents actually advise me. It's very hard for me, even being in real estate for a number of years and trying to actually determine the value of my own property that I've put my own blood, sweat and tears into. So if you use that framing, that language and that structure, then you want to leave this with the seller. You don't want them to have to make a snap decision at that point in time. Let them think it through. Give them a few days and say, why don't we regroup and see where we land? And then you wanna finish all of these conversations by saying, I'm behind you 110%, no matter which direction you go, I am here for you. I am here for you throughout this process. They need to know that you are coming from a place of support. You want the best for them, you're empathetic, but you're also here to deliver them the news, even when it's news they don't necessarily wanna hear. That is our job. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode. Reach out anytime at revrealestateschool.com. Thanks again, we'll see you in the next lesson.